Hey YouTube, we're here to talk about Greenleaf, episode, uh, episode three, I'm sorry, season three, episode nine. Okay, so this thing, oh, let me tell you right off top, I think they may be killing off the character of uh, Bishop James Greenleaf. I tend to think of him as being the main character, but he's actually not the show character's name, but... Uh, I just don't see any other way this is going to end because they're going through with the divorce. Okay, so it opens up with the Silver Big Silver Jubilee. This is what uh, uh, Bishop's been looking forward to and why uh, May is having her celebration on a different day. So first is his Jubilee. Then it goes to him going back to his office his secretary hands him papers, and they are the divorce papers, the final divorce papers. When he signs this book, this paper, and May signs it, they are divorced. They are no longer a married couple. Right. So he doesn't seem very excited about it. He seems kind of depressed about it, actually. Uh, next thing we see is Gigi who has been very suspicious of, of uh, Rochelle Cross, knows now about the money he's given her and how extensive it is. And he asked, he, she asked his, her father about how much money he gave to Rochelle. He won't tell her. He just implies that he's going to be very wealthy and you'll see, you'll see. He says that oh, she's working with you. Why would you hire her if you didn't trust her? She said, I hired her because I didn't trust her. I see this coming to a head. Now, this episode is basically every scene has got Bishop in it, virtually. Another clue that this might be his final swan song. Uh, Grace tells him, right, get the money back, Daddy. She knows She knows something, something ain't right. There's... there's Flies in the potato soup. Even though she hasn't figured out what it is, she knows that this, him giving over his whole personal fortune to this woman, who she knows is up to something, is a bad mistake. Right? Get it back. <laughs> Next we see Kevin and Aaron, who seem to be very happy together. And Bishop seems very accepting of their relationship. We lost into the room. Uh, Charity, Aaron, and Kevin are in a room together. Uh, Charity has kind of a forced smile, kind of a calm, kind of a, not a grin, but it's, it's very, very soft. She's still resentful about what happened between her and Kevin. Bishop asks to hold the baby. Baby starts, baby starts crying, so he gives him back to Kevin. And then Aaron doesn't want to have a word with him, and Aaron tells him that his father has pancreatic cancer. That's one of the most serious cancers you can have. So basically, his father is in hospice, hospice care. These are his final days, and he asked the bishop, uh, he told the bishop that he's called him several times. Bishop says he's been busy. So bishop is being stubborn. These people, they all have fucked other people. Every damn one of them. <laughs> And they always seem so judgmental. The man who's dying, Aaron's father, I'm sorry, I forget his name, had an affair with, with, with Lady May. So how come, how come May can be forgiven, but the bishop can't? Affairs that went on th maybe 20, 25, 30 years ago. Anyway, I didn't write the story. Okay. But he's, Bishop seems very accepting of Kevin and, and their, uh, Kevin and Aaron's relationship. In fact, uh, a couple of scenes later, uh, Charity announces that Kevin and Aaron are getting married. They're planning to get married. But they're right now, they're buying a house together. Of course, she's jealous. It was supposed to be her. It was her man. But she made that decision. She forced their divorce. They wanted to go there and live in a life forever. He was willing to do that. 
All right. Next thing he does, everything, as I said, is, is bishops in it. So, the next thing he does, it's like a death march. <laughs> next thing he does, he talks to Sophia. Sophia is still angry at the church. She don't want to go to the church, but he says, well, it's my, my silver jubilee. I really want you to come. I, God has given me a special word for you. I still wish some of them would come out of somewhere and explain to me what, what how are they defining when God speaks to them. I want to know what that is. I, I've, kept, I've felt, I've felt it many times, but I still want to know what, what that is. So sometimes it really, really frustrates me when people are saying what God told them. Now, he is the bishop, <laughs> the spiritual leader of his community, so I would expect that if he was leading anybody, be leading him. But uh, she's, she doesn't give him a firm answer. Right, she's still mad at church. You don't want to go up in there. Uh, next thing we see is Bishop is going back to. He's staying with Percy in his funeral home. Still not clear to me whether this man has a home on the property or if he, if they actually live in the in the the place. It was all one deal, but he's staying there. Big, great, big old Victorian mansion. Uh, he comes home and his, his hooker is in the in the uh, kitchen, right? So I was thinking, okay, so now Percy's got to set that bishop up with the, with the hooker so he can get some at least that might help him. She says he she he's just conked out. He's done, but she's willing to stay if he wants. Of course, it's her business. That's what she does. Bishop passes on that golden opportunity. Uh, Next thing, the bishop, every, every scene is the bishop. <laughs> That's why I know he's on his way out. Okay, next thing, the bishop wants to speak with uh, Jacob. He goes to speak with Jacob, and he asks her, him about Tasha. Is there, is there a problem you're having with your wife about Tasha? Jacob totally denies that, denies that nothing is happening. And what else did he say? The conversation switches over to the, the divorce. Bishop tells him that he's just received the papers and he's having a hard time signing them. Jacob suggests that you don't want to sign them, do you? And the bishop never wanted this divorce. He might have tried to play hardball by starting the divorce procedures to try to shock her into going forward. But to his surprise, she actually went forward, has gone forward. And... Uh, he doesn't want to sign these papers. Jacob says, listen, you have your jubilee. She has her celebration. You guys go back in your corners, fight over. That's the way it looked in the beginning because you wonder how in the hell is the primary married couple, it's supposed to be a church story, right? How are they going to have a divorce? But it looks like, it looks like they were going forward with this divorce. So I think we're going to be seeing a lot more May. If that's the way they write it. Okay. All right. Bishop and Charity. At his big celebration. His Jubilee. His Jubilee, I think, is 60-year Jubilee. Is that 60 years of being uh, the pastor there? Bishop's an old man. I don't know why they won't give us numbers, but he's well into his 70s, right? And he has uh, Parkinson's. That's been reintroduced in this episode as well. And he's a depressed man because he's losing his family and potentially even his church he's going to have to fight for. He's a tired man. Uh, he has another one of these conversations with Percy. Percy says, uh, Bishop asks him, what do you do with your money? And Bishop says, and Percy uh, says, he don't know how much, how much, he can only do this once a week or something. Bishop said, oh, he assumes that he's pick, how he's paying these hookers, right? He said, no matter no matter how they make, make you feel and how good these girls are, in the bottom line, you still know you're paying for it. 
You're so lucky to have Rochelle. And Bishop, uh, with his eyes, he he wanted he he's contemplating what this man is saying. Percy said, "It's almost hard to believe, nearly impossible to believe," and he drops it and leaves the, the room. Right. So next scene, Bishop goes in and re confronts Rochelle, and he asks her directly, "Why are you here? What do you want with me?" She. She looks just like the devil. Her expressions, <laughs> maybe because I know that she that she is she is the devil, but uh, she suggests he sa he says something about you know you can get all these bucks in town. Why do you want me? She's offended. She fakes fakes like oh my god, how would you say such a thing? And uh, she nearly walks out. She said, I'm going to show you something first. She directs him to pick up his phone and to dial into this app, which traces, tracks her, tracks and traces her investment, his investments, right? So he goes to the app, and according to the app, according to the app, he's made a lot of money. They won't get numbers again. They just say, oh, I made that much? Oh, I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And he, she says, and she is done. She says, who's using who? I am done. So as she's trying to leave, he begs her, literally begs her to stay. He said, promises her, I'll never talk to you. I'll never mistrust you again. All based on this app. <laughs> she's probably robbed his man blind. Anyway, last thing we see is, No. Second to the last thing we see is Bishop makes it over to this hospice, real fancy hospice, uh, to see Aaron's father, who used to be his best friend, and May's lover. He's dying. Basically, his lines are, I'm sorry. He's just trying to find closure and forgiveness. And Bishop gives him what he wants. He says, this is the last time I'll see you on this earth, and I, I do forgive you. There are no manly hugs or anything like that. He says, I forgive you, and walks out. Last thing we see here is Bishop signs his part of this divorce paper, gives it to May, and she signs it. I'll never understand that woman. She signs it for an affair that happened 30 years ago. Anyway, so... I don't know. I, it looks like this may be the last. They may be writing him out of the script. Maybe because he needs to be out of the script for some reason. I don't know what it is. But it doesn't look like we're going to see much more of Bishop. And they've mentioned his disease, this, this, uh, this uh, Parkinson's, twice in this episode. They haven't talked about that for a long time. I think after the divorce. I was almost expecting at the end of this episode for him to be sitting on the porch somewhere and just lean his head over and be dead. It got like that. It's, it's, it's kind of a spooky kind of a uh, undertone here. But, uh, oh, I left out one scene when he goes, talks to Sophia after the Jubilee. He he talks to so Sophia and tells her this long story about a runaway train. This is how they named this. They called this episode Runaway Train. He's trying to expl explain life to her in a, in a metaphor. Metaphor is about a, her being on a runaway train, God being the conductor, and needing her help. She's about to leap. She goes to the conductor, who is God. He tells her that he needs her. Go back into the train. Let the others know I'm in control. Something like that. Okay, so I don't know what you guys think. Is he going to die? It sure seems like this is it. When she signs that paper at the end, I mean, they are divorced. He hands the papers off to his secretary to, to send to his lawyer. So, I mean, we could have one scene where she, May comes in, runs in and tears them up or something like that. Something like that could possibly happen because she hasn't sent them, actually sent them yet. But they have both signatures. They are divorced. I guess the lawyer has to file it with with, with the, the city or uh, part of the city and the state. Essentially, they're done. 
We'll see. So this may be the last uh, last season for the bishop. Talk to you guys next week.